this is my attempt to be creative and artistic. And yeah, there's a reason I didn't go to school for anything arts related. So anyways, we're going to calculate the value of pi by basically throwing darts randomly. This is a brief introduction to Monte Carlo techniques, which is basically a class of algorithms used to solve various problems using random numbers. When I came across this pi calculation technique years and years ago, I mean decades ago at this point, uh, I thought it was a little on the silly side, and it still is kind of on the silly side. It's definitely not an efficient way to calculate pi, but at least it is an easy to understand um, calculation, and it's a good jumping off point for Monte Carlo techniques. This is pretty straightforward here. We're going to start with a circle of radius 1. And then for the sake of simplicity, we're going to just going to focus on this um, shaded quadrant here, this, the shaded in gray, the upper, upper, um, upper right quadrant. So if we look at this square here, it's obviously of side 1. And this circle uh, is a quarter circle of radius 1. So the area of the square is pretty straightforward. It's just L equals 1, L, you know, area equals L squared, which is 1 squared or equal to 1. The area of the quarter circle is 1 quarter pi r squared, or a quarter, uh, quarter times pi. So uh, to calculate the area, uh, to calculate the value of pi, we could just use the ratio of the area of the circle to the area of the square. Now the Monte Carlo part comes in. Uh, we're going to estimate that, that area ratio by calculating the number of random x, y points that end up within the circle. Uh, divided by the total number of points. So the total number of points would be the number of points in the square since by definition we're taking our random points between um, x equals 1, 0, and y equals 1 and 0. So all the points are within the square. We're going to calculate the number of points in the circle and just take that ratio. Uh, the more and more points you put to, uh, you know, uh, use, the closer that that value actually gets to, to um, the actual areas, the actual ratio of the areas and hence the actual value of pi. So just to reiterate, we're estimating the value of pi uh, by taking the number of points in the circle and divided by the total number of points thrown, or total number, total number of points picked. And the more and more points you pick, the closer that, that estimate gets to the actual value of pi. So it's, this is going to be a pretty straightforward project. So let's start with a file very originally named pi.py. We're going to need numpy, so import numpy as np. We're going to need n points, so let's just set n equal to 1,000 for now, and call the points, very originally again, points, and we'll just use the np.random, dot <coughs> .rand, and we're going to have uh, n rows, and we're going to have uh, two columns each, so each row is going to be an x, y pair. Let's just save that and go to our uh, console and make sure this actually runs. Python pi. Oops, wrong file. Python. Pi. Good. We are good to go. So now we need to see if these points are within a uh, circle of radius 1. So uh, we're going to use a built-in function um, that comes with numpy called norm. And we're just going to call this variable here norms for now. And the function is uh, np.lin norm, And we're going to find the norm of these points points, and we are going to set the axis equal to 1. In other words, we're going to kind of take the um, each row as its own its own vector and calculate the norm of that vector. Good. I should know that this norms function is basically uh, using a Pythagorean relationship to calculate the length of, of, the, of each point. So this would be the same as essentially typing in this, right? It's the uh, it's the square of the uh, of the uh, x values plus the square of the y values summed and then square rooted. So this basically just calculates uh, that for us, so we don't have to loop over the whole thing or do um, do something complicated like this. So good. Uh, now we need to know if the points are inside circle uh, inside the circle. So we'll just come up with a variable inside circle and we'll set that equal to a uh, boolean variable and that'll be norms. Um, inside circle be less than or equal, oops, less than or equal to one. So this will just give us a uh, a, a vector of true, true, and, true and false values, whether uh, the points are inside the circle or not. Okay, and then uh, basically all we need to know now are the number inside the circle. So we're gonna go num number inside circle, and that's gonna be equal to the sum of uh, the variable 
that we just defined inside circle. And you know I am going to wrap this in a float command just to make sure that um, this ends up as a floating variable so we could take the, um, the ratio of it uh, with respect to the number of, of points we have. So that's uh, it. Now all we need to do is um, print out the answer. Number in circle. Uh, let's just change this to make it number in circle. And that should be good. Save it. Let's go to our console window and run it. So let's see what we're getting here. We're getting 3.04, so let's, let's up this to a million. There we go, 3.14. The last thing I want to talk about is something called vectorization. There's a reason I casted this code the way I did, uh, generating a matrix of random numbers and then using the norm function to figure out the uh, position of each, each point. Now this is admittedly simple, but in more complicated uh, situations you'll see things where code is phrased in the terms of matrix multiplication or vector algebra, and at first glance that, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. The reason is that these NumPy libraries and SciPy libraries and things like MATLAB's uh, matrix manipula manipulation routines are written in highly optimized C code or Fortran code and compiled down into binary format. So when you do matrix multiplication, it's calling a C program that's essentially running the loop for you. That way you don't have to use the interpreter's loop ability to run code, and this produces a huge speed up in your execution times. So let's put together an example to see exactly what I mean here. So the beginning part of this is basically the same thing I showed before. We take our endpoints, we create a uh, n by 2 matrix of random var variables, calculate the norm of each row, and then it's, it's the same as which is just what we did. The only difference is I calculate the time it takes to calculate, uh, calculate pi. Then we go down here and we essentially do the same thing, so we do it via a loop. So for each iteration of the loop, it calculates a random x value, a random y value. Uh, the norm of that uh, x, y vector, is it in the circle, is it not? And if so, we uh, increment the number of number in the circle by 1. Then it calculates the, um, the same, uh, you know, calculates pi and prints out the time. So let's compare how these two, uh, these two code snippets run. Let's go over to the console, Python. So the first one's about half a second, which is to be expected. It's pretty, pretty quick. But as you can see, this the uh, second code with the loop is still, still working. Still working. Come on, you can do it. Just a little longer. Come on. Come on. There we go. 21 seconds, roughly speaking. So that's why we use vectorization. I mean, this is a factor of almost, what, 40 uh, difference in speed here? So that's a simple introduction to Monte Carlo techniques. Uh, this whole pi thing is a little silly, and but at least it's simple to understand. Uh, the next Monte Carlo thing we're going to do is look at uh, probability of a touch in finance. So if a stock is trading, say, 100 bucks, what's the probability that it'll hit uh, 102 or 105 or, or go down, say, 95, 90? dollars within a given given time frame. It's pretty easy to do, uh, very similar in, in, in concept to, uh, to what we just did here. I haven't decided if I want to do that first or take a, a brief foray into physics and look at uh, Python's or SciPy's uh, Runge-Kutta solver, differential equation solver that's uh, included in, in the SciPy package. So uh, next video will either be uh, simple physics problems or uh, probability of a touch. Catch you guys later.